Hi, I'm Jane. Hi, my name is Mandilake. I was born in PE, grew up on the East Rand, came back to PE, did some studying, did loads of traveling, and now I live in Port Elizabeth and work as a massage therapist with my family, with my husband and my 10 year old daughter. I'm from here, Eastern Cape, but my, my roots are coming from the side of um, Kirkwood. I grew up with a mom who cooked really well, and she was very adventurous with her cooking. So I was um, very inspired by my mom. I've always enjoyed cooking. I used to cook in the kitchen with her. I have to live with my aunt, and then my aunt is so, now nah, man, you are Elena. Come, let me show you something. And then she showed me like some real cooking style, some real cooking recipe. That's how I've entered. And I have an assortment of animals. I have two cats and two dogs. Let me go and tell my aunt about this. And then I tell my aunt and another relative. And then they are saying, ha, you like to be famous in Panama. Like, you really want to go into TV, like, by all means. I said, no, guys, like, this is an opportunity. And explain it's something that I love because cooking, <clears throat> I can say cooking is part of my my culture. We're quite adventurous with our eating. We love Asian food, but we also love different flavors. We had a Moroccan lamb stew the other night. We enjoy um, all sorts of flavors, some spicy food. I traveled to India last year and I fell in love with all the food there. So lots of curries. That's why I'm saying like cooking is about to think like out of the box. Okay, let me do this, let me do that. I can cook, you see, I know my ability to cook. My daughter also loves cooking, so we rope her in. So she's the little sous chef for now but eventually she'll be doing all the cooking. <laughs> and then when you add that gravy, that little bit of brownness, and then you bring like a massive color, the color that says, look at me, and then the meal that says, eat me. You see, I'm looking beautiful, eat me. So you'll find later how I'm just like, oh no, just eat me, you see. I think probably prefer to be first. Cook first, anyway, cook first, because then you can sit back and actually enjoy the second, the, the meal second time round. So we're on our way to Mandilake's house in Kwamagaki. Uh, your nervous excitement versus uh, just pure joyous excitement? I think I'm, I'm more joyously excited because I think this is going to be lots of fun. And uh, there's nothing to study for, there was no research I could do. I don't know what I'm going to be cooking until I rock up in the kitchen. Well, here we are. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Jane is ready to cook a recipe she's never seen for a family she's never met. Hello! Hello. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> this, must be, this is Jay. This must be Jay. Hello. Hi, Hello. nice to meet you. Oh, thank you, likewise. Good. This is my aunt. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> and this is my niece, Kanisa. Hello, Kanisa. This is my kitchen. Oh, great. This is where you will use the, here is the stove. This and is then, where the magic happens. Yes, this is where the magic <laughs> happens. And then here's your ingredients, everything that you'll use. Okay. And also the pots are here. Thank and you. Yeah, the stove. Ah, here's your recipe, Jane. Let's hope you won't find any difficulties oh, because you're hope. for me. Let's hope it's really easy. Yes, yes. I'm not sort of feeling like there might be some sort of style of cooking that will intimidate me. I'm not a gourmet chef, but hopefully it's not too fiddly and too fussy. Now, how do we pronounce it? Umusho and chicken. Umusho and cook. Umusho and chicken. Because she couldn't even pronounce it, she knows like it's a sample. And what does that mean? It's a sample. Ah, the it's sample. Sample. Especially never having cooked sample before. You know what? I asked my husband before coming here. Why How do you cook sample? Because I've never <laughs> cooked sample before. So you thought exactly. So it was a consequence. I okay. Just knew just... I don't even know what it should be like, what it should taste like, the texture should be like. I've never even eaten sample. Yo, you're going to my struggle. Ooh. Please, and my aunt doesn't have teeth, you see. So okay, enough. so it must so, be soft. So yeah, it must be it soft enough, so please help me on that. Because okay. it will be the blame on me. My recipe, I think it's come from more traditions because the first time I see, I've seen this like this meal, it, it was on a traditional work at home. My aunt actually did it. So these are the ingredients that you're going to, going to follow. To use? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Let's hope you. I mean, they might have little secrets that maybe they haven't put in the recipe. I don't know. They might try and trick you out. Because I never measure before. I never use measurement. I just sprinkle and so then do my things. got to kind of improvise it. Exactly. We as blacks, we, we, don't, we don't measure. We don't measure the salt or the spices. Our, our, like, our ancestors, like, they were just telling us, you can stop now, my child, you see? You probably find on the same um, 
packet there might be also a recipe. But so I, I think mine are better. Oh, the better. one if she or he doesn't have ancestors, you're so God help him. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Just do your do your <laughs> magic. Just okay. surprise me. Excellent. Yes. Thanks, Mandilake. You don't need me anymore. You'll just I think shout. You go relax. I'm yes. gonna read through yes. and then I can start. If I can't find anything, I'll ask you. I'll be sitting over okay. there. Okay. Excellent. Session. Relax and enjoy okay. yourself. Uh, initial impressions? Yeah, I think I think I can do this, but obviously never having made Sam before, that's going to be interesting. The Sam's going to be a learning curve, but isn't that what we have? We'll be here so, for. So yeah, that's All fine. Right. You're going to have to really trust your instinct. Yeah. Uh, what's your heritage again? You're Scottish. S Scottish. It's so you gonna... have to trust the Sam, <laughs> the Sam Scots. <laughs> McSamp. <laughs> your recipe is here. Your kitchen okay. is here. Good luck, right. and we'll Thank see you. how it goes throughout. Thank you. Okay, excellent. So Sam? Time to unpack the ingredients. Let's see what Jane has to work with. I think McSam definitely came into play. <laughs> In addition to the Sam, she unpacks country range chicken, oil, a whole butternut, assorted spices, butter and potatoes. Now the prep can begin. After hunting around the kitchen a bit, Soak samp with water for two hours before cooking. Two cups of samp with four cups of water. Lucky for Jane, Mandelake has organized quick soak 30 minute samp. I'm worried now that I've added it too soon. Oh my goodness. Okay. Looks like she might have a bit of an um, mosh headache. Cook the potatoes. Okay, let's get the potatoes on the go. It's all about the timing, knowing when to put something on. You don't know someone else's oven, you don't know how their plates work. Also, I have gas at home and now you're working on electric plates. So I've got to think about what I've got to do, what order I need to cook everything in so that it all kind of comes together. And then I'll prep my butternut. I mustn't forget about the samp that's soaking. Now what if I don't want to follow the recipe at all and I just want to do it my way? <laughs> and you watch those guys on MasterChef and they just peel a potato in like five seconds. That's not me. Jane peels several potatoes in a bit longer than five seconds each. Next, under the prep knife, it's the butternut. Butternut, got to be cooked with 150 grams of sugar. This is 250 grams. Very scientific measurements. Let the precise expert measuring begin. The sugar packet was, uh, I think it held 250 grams of sugar and I just estimated with my, with my thumb. But you know, it's, it always works. Jane carefully measures out the precise amount of butter she needs, this time without her thumb, and gets the butternut on the stove. The potatoes go in and the samp goes on. So I'm going to use one tray of country range chicken. I need to fry it. I'm worried this is still not going to be big enough. Oh, you know what? I don't have space to cook it at the moment. After running out of hot plates to cook on, Jane decides to use a lifeline. Uh, how are things going out there? Fine, no problem. I'm just wondering about this chicken because of the timing and obviously needing the plates on the stove. To, to cut the time short, you can just roast it. Roast it in the yes, oven? Yes, roast it in the oven. It was very helpful when Mandy said that I didn't have to fry the chicken first, I could just pop it all in the oven, and that's actually how he normally does it anyway, so I was relieved about that, because I was sort of running out of plates as well to, to cook on, so that helped. Your time will be running, because I'm also thinking about time. Yeah, 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 no, we, we, we need to. I felt like she she, little, she little bit took, like, took, take long. Then I can get onto the chicken straight carry, away. Carry on, carry okay, on. Carry on. Yeah, now this oven's like a Lamborghini because the doors don't open normally. They go up and over, but hell, it works. Fry with quarter cup cooking oil and then later add a cup of water. Yeah, these are the good bits of chicken, definitely. <laughs> Oh, no, the chicken was a dream. So I was really concerned that I might get all sorts of giblets and things to cook and I'd have to clean them and I wasn't looking forward to that. So no, the chicken was great. You're like a rabbit in the headlights looking at the recipe. Suddenly it's not a recipe, it's just words being flashed at you. 
Yes, it gives you such appreciation for those guys that go on those cooking shows. Once she's seasoned the chicken carefully, Jane loads it into the Ferrari oven. We have lift off. Check my temp's not boiling too much. You see it is. Okay, it doesn't say anything about stirring. So maybe I should. I'm so tempted though to stick with spooning. Oh, I'm sure it won't hurt. Okay, so it looks like my samp is soft. So that's, I think, a good sign. So I've turned that off. Butternut's almost done. Potatoes, I'm just going to leave a little bit longer because some are feeling a bit crunchy still. And I want to check on the chicken. So we're going to do a little chicken check. Mmm, looking good? Certainly does. Happy with the chicken? I'm just going to add these potatoes in. I think these are ready to mash. Okay, three spoons of plain aromat, two spoons of butter. They're nice and soft. Yeah, I, I did a bit of peeling and then I did a bit of mashing with a fork. So my right arm is going to be super developed. It's getting there. Whew, I need a breather. Aromat actually does taste nice. But please don't put this on film. My husband is not allowed to know that. I think it's okay. <laughs> Take half of the cooked mash and add it to the simp. Okay, that's the next step. So far so good, but the proof will be in the tasting of the simp, so I don't want to assume that maybe I've done a good job. Maybe I haven't. So half of the cooked mash added to the simp and add eight spoons of Cremora. And who knew that Cremora went in the samp? Here goes the Cremora. Six, seven, eight spoons. And let's mix this in. My auntie said, no, you must not put too much Cremora because you know most Cremora can be some like sweet sometimes, you see? So that means someone who has diabetes will struggle maybe to finish the plate. So you must make it just medium or just to be nice. And it's my first time I've ever used Cremora in anything other than coffee. So I'm dying to actually taste what, it, what it's going to be like. So this is my Sam. Hopefully done. I'm going to taste it now. And what's the verdict? Hmm. That's quite nice. I don't know if it tastes like Mundy normally makes it, but I'd eat that. As if it comes from their family background, it's made with love. It's made with, maybe there, there were certain smells and sounds associated with those meals as well and certain celebrations that they had with those meals. So those are the things that obviously you can't really match. Even if you cook their recipe really well, you can't always manufacture all those emotive, I suppose, things that go with a meal. You can only hope to cook it as well as you can, um, but you can't match that. The reason why I love, this, I love this recipe is because it was cooked like from back at home. You see, at my, at my, at my home. Not just like here. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I haven't burnt it, I've caramelized it. It's just a lovely caramelization here, which must come off now. But you know, I do feel the caramelization of the butternut added to the dish. Jane takes the lightly burnt, uh, caramelized butternut off the stove. Just in time, I think. Leftover mash can be served with some rosemary added to it. Right. The problem with the chicken is that my little potato wedges are going to hold up the works. I'm going to take it out and just give it a little stir. Chicken's looking fine. All right, how's the chicken looking? It's, it's looking good. Maybe five more minutes. And I think we might have some good chicken here. Uh, and the, uh, the potato. Um, yeah, do you think so... you got close? Or... <laughs> no, I haven't got close at all. Um, in fact, Mundy did remark on the fact that um, he wasn't quite sure what was going on here. He normally just takes two potatoes and cuts them into a few wedges and chucks them in. But I misinterpreted the chop up two potatoes. So I'm going with a new take on Mundy's recipe and um, maybe he'll prefer it. Let's just hope this takes five more minutes and then we're good to go. Will you help yes, me with yes, the Yes, yes, go on the other Sorry, side. Sorry, if you don't yeah. mind. Great. All right, guys, 
Are you are you ready ready for lunch now? Yes, yes. we are. A bit hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mama, how are you feeling about uh, this recipe? And how do you like the uh, mush to be? It must be soft. And do you like it to be mixed with uh, the mash like he does it? Yes, mash in cremora. Okay. So, if she's missed the butter or the cremora, you're going to know. Uh, she's got a chance. Yeah, we can did, say that. Did you see the chicken when you went to look in the kitchen? Did you see it a little bit or not yet? No, I just saw before she put it in the oven. I just saw it and then I didn't know how it turned out, why it was on the so we, oven. We're all waiting for that surprise. We're all waiting for that <laughs> to see. So, are we ready? Yes. Can we Let's call that it. chicken? Yes. All right, Jane, I've been delegated by a hungry family to come and check on the affairs of the kitchen. Are you ready to plate? How's it going? I'm ready. You're ready? I'm ready. You've got a very willing, receptive audience waiting for okay, your hungry. heart. Okay, hungry. Hungry, hungry and ready. Because right. hunger is the best cook, so let's hope they're very hungry. It's going to be delicious. <laughs> to be divine. Okay, All right. So get going. Begin your plating and let's see how it goes. Okay, Okay. Well, I'm going to put the mash on the plate first. Oh dear, I hope I have enough for everyone. All right. I haven't really thought out the plating, but anyway. It's going to be, it's going to be delicious. For me, as long as the flavour is good, the plating is kind of secondary. Next is going to be the butternut, caramelised butternut. Hopefully it tastes good. And then one of the features of the dish. Well, let's hope I've nailed the simp. If the look is anything to go by, she just might have. Right, the chicken, the hero of the dish. Along with a samp, of course. So to me, it's all about the, the decor of the plate. So that's where the samp came in because the samp will be white, but the meat, the brownness of the meat, must come out. It's not very um, fine dining plating, I'm afraid, but it is home cooking. So it, that's what it is. I must say, when it comes to home cooking. <laughs> It's more like what, how much can we get on our plate is actually almost more important than how beautiful it looks. Right, okay. We're good to go. Here we go. Thank you. It's a pleasure you. for the ladies. Thank you, young lady. <laughs> so the first look okay for you? Yes, it is. When it comes to cooking, you can hit, you like, you can hit it differently, you see? How you how you deal with your ingredients and how you add them. But I think the, I think the main purpose, it will be a taste and also how the food looks like. The man of the house. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. There you go, Thank right you very it. much. Let's see there. Because it, like, it looks like marvelous. Okay. Yeah. So it's got a good look no, to it. It's got a good look. Mandelake gives the thumbs up to the plating. Now it's time to eat. Oh good, I hope it tastes very nice. What, where do you start usually? with the samp. <laughs> yes, I think so. you still got to tell me the It's called and Kuku, so that's the order you must go in. Because... Oh, nice. Nice. Mm. It's very soft. Mm. Oh, good. I definitely think the samp could have been the undoing of the dish, but it seemed to come together and I got everyone's approval and it was soft enough. And so it seems like first time, it worked for me. Wow, it seems like we've been cooking mush before. Mm. Wow. Am I a natural? I'm going to have to make it at home now. Mm. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm taking the recipe with me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> My husband will be impressed if I make him mush. Let's taste the chicken. Oh, I know. That's just the chicken now. Now we must. She used the rosemary very well so that we can we can taste the texture of that spice. So it was coming very well and the combination with the mashed potato and also those potatoes, it was it was superb. This is how this is how the meal was made. Okay. There's the texture. Okay, good. Wow. I haven't done it really well. I think I've been busy. Like, <laughs> wow, that's good. Don't worry, Monday, 
You'll yeah. get you'll get good advice from me too. <laughs> it, won't, it won't be something difficult, please. No, no, please. you'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be fine. She said it's a Spanish flying chicken. What? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> the family feel really great. Like if you can see behind me, like the plates are empty. They've eaten much and they've enjoyed. I, I've actually learned a lot today. I've I've got some inspiration. I'm going to take it home with me. I'm going to cook Sam at home. But for me, for her to come here, it was such a great experience. You see, at least I can, I can actually like taught someone how to to make something that she usually not like she didn't do in her life. You see, so it was it was good for me. All right, guys, that's day one. The next time we meet, someone else will be cooking in someone else's kitchen. All right, thanks for a great day one. I look forward to the next time. Yeah. I hope I do the same on Monday. Bye bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. I think my family, are, they can't wait to meet our guest chef on Monday night. They're very excited. It's going to be awesome. Coming up next time on Our Home Plate. Was, I really didn't expect this, like this dish. So many ingredients. Yeah. Oh, one you even use the, if you look at the next size. The next He offered a lot of advice without me even asking when I was in his house and in his kitchen. And I was more than happy to help. You guys. I don't want to eat this, it well with me in the stomach.